What chess set would be complete without a chessboard? In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a chessboard for our chess pieces to sit on. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to create myself a cube. Now, the sizing of this is obviously going to depend on the chess pieces. And once we get those in our file, we will be able to determine how big we want our chess set, our chess board to be. Okay, now chess boards are of course a square. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we get a nice big square. Okay, I'm going to make sure that the details are exactly the same. So over on the right hand side, I'm just going to change my attributes manager. Let's make it a nice even 1000 by say 100 high and then 1000. Okay, this makes for a very chunky chess board. Now the reason for this is that rather than just a standard block, I'm going to add some nice little detail around the outside. And to do that, I'm going to use my sweep nerves. So up here, under the generators, I have the sweep nerves, so I'm just going to create that. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to add some detailing around the outside of my board. So the sweep nerves by using two splines, it sweeps one around the other. So as our chess board is square, I'm going to need to create a rectangle spline. Okay, and I'm going to need to adjust it so that it is nice and flat. We can't see it at the moment because it's inside. And then make sure it's the same width as my cube, which is a thousand by a thousand. Now I need to create some form of profile that will sweep around the rectangle and give that nice sort of detailed effect to my chessboard. Okay, so I'm going to use my pen tool. And what I'm going to need to do is make sure that I go to one of my side views. Otherwise, as we've seen before, this could all go horribly wrong. Now, using this as a guide, you can see that I've got the black lines of the cube here and here. And I want to make sure that my profile is the same sort of height. So I'm going to click and I'm going to create my first spline. Now, it's really up to you, depending on sort of the detail that you want your chessboard to have. And obviously you can always edit and adjust it afterwards. Maybe you want a nice step effect. We can add a variety of steps or we can add, if you click and hold, you've got that nice curvature that will give you some sort of rounding, which nice for maybe reflections and things a little bit later. Like I say, I'm just, just adapting what it is that I've got. Okay. You can see, just to close that off, okay, I create. If you notice that there was a little bit of an angle there, so I'm just going to select these points and I'm just going to make sure that uh, they are at zero. Make sure my spline is selected only. There we go, minus 50. Okay, so we want that exactly on 50, minus 50, and we want this one exactly on 50 so that we know it is 100 high. Okay, and now just go back to my 3D view. Obviously I can't see there at the moment, but I'm gonna put my two splines inside the sweep nerves. Okay, and you can see that it starts to attempt to sweep one around the other. I'm just gonna hide my cube for the moment. Okay, not exactly what I had in mind there. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spline, okay, and I'm going to adjust its central axis. Okay, to do that, I need to be on object mode, and then I need to go to the rotate tool. So what's happened is, is that the central axis is sweeping its way around, not in the view that you were expecting. And if I rotate, you can see that it starts to adjust that in much more the way that we were expecting, okay? If I hold down shift and get to 90 degrees, you can see that I now have that lovely sort of step effect that I was after from my frame, okay? So I'll just put the cube back, okay? And you can see that I now have my chessboard ready to go. So now we need to start adding some texture detail to it. So I'm gonna to go to the materials manager down the bottom left and double click to create myself a new material, okay? Now I can edit it in the attributes manager, but also if I double click it again, it will bring up the material editor, which is something that I just prefer to work in. Okay, so under the textures 
area here under the color tab. So the color attribute is selected and has a tick in it. So I know that's what I'll be using. I can click under the textures and I've got a whole list of things I can do. I can bring in images, um, you know, like we've done before, or I can have presets. We can add in a variety of other aspects of uh, texturing that we could use. But one of the things I'm going to go for uh, is wonderfully set up for us already under surfaces, which is the checkerboard. So if I click that, you can see that I now have a checkerboard surface you know, in my materials preview manager here. Okay, and that is simply exactly what we would expect, black and white squares. Now if I drag and drop it to my cube, so I'll click and I will drag and I will drop it to my cube, you can see that we have a very small sort of number of squares there to make up our chess set. To edit that, what we can do is I'm just going to close my materials manager. Over here is the textures tag and that texture tag shows what texture it is that applies to, what material it is. It's called matte, uh, nothing to do with me. And then we have down the bottom the projection. That's how it is being applied to that cube, what numbers of sides it on, whether or not it mixes. But the stuff that's the most useful for us is the number of tiles. And this is how many times that this particular image is repeated on the object that we've got. Now, chess sets, uh, chess boards rather, are eight by eight. So we've got two. So by my calculations, if we make it four tiles that direction and four tiles in that direction, we will end up with the perfect number of squares to fit our chess pieces on. Okay, so it doesn't look too bad at the moment. It gives the sort of effect that we were expecting. Okay, and maybe we should do some tweaking of that a little bit later once we've got the chess pieces in. Okay, now we're going to need to look at the edging and the material for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in Cinema 4D's content browser over here on the right hand side. Now there's a variety of different um, wood textures and things like that that come with Cinema 4D. Depending on your version will depend on the ones that you have access to. So I'm just going to go to the search function there by pressing the little magnifying glass and I'm just going to type in wood. Okay, and we get to see what sort of things there are available to us. So you can scroll down and you can see that there's a whole load of TIFFs and things like that. And, maybe some more stuff that we're looking for. So I'm just gonna scale up. We can see what's going on in there a little bit more. Um, so some wood floors and things like that. Maybe something like that is what I'm going for to give this a nice sort of posh look. So just double click that and that will give me my material and it will add it down in the manager. Just gonna have a quick scroll through, see what other ones there are available. If there's anything that I particularly like the look of, some nice parquet flooring. Um, lacquered and things like that. No, I think I'm, I'm quite happy with what I've got there. Uh, again, obviously it's down to you to kind of maybe experiment and explore. I'm just going to drag and drop and apply that texture to it. Okay, so this gives me a nice sort of polished look. So let's have a look and see what it kind of looks like under the render view. So I'm just going to click render up there. Okay, not too bad. Gives an interesting sort of look. So maybe I want to try adjusting some of the settings a little bit. So just going to click on my tag. I'm going to change the projection. Um, I find sometimes that the UV mapping, UVW mapping isn't quite as uh, intuitive as I'd hoped. So I'm going to have a look at maybe applying it cubically and we'll see. Ah, there we go. That kind of gives a sort of a nicer look there. And you can see that, you know, we're getting something that kind of works really nice. You know, we like its highlights and shiny sort of aspects and things like that, the way it looks on the top. Okay, so if I just render that, okay, you can see that we now have this nice sort of wooden texture all the way around. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is just group my objects so that they can be ready to export into another file. So just going over to my attributes manager, I'm going to click and drag the left mouse, select everything that I want. Okay, and then Alt G on the keyboard will allow me to group all of my objects. If I just press the plus, you can still have access to them. And then if I double click on the name and just write chessboard, okay, and double click off, you can see that I now have a group ready to export into another file, which I shall then texture all of my elements, light and render out.
I shall see you in the next video.